Hello YouTube, it's your boy J Ro, Ro Ro ATL, Roselli, Rosell coming at you all again. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to all and the ones that's less fortunate. I'm praying about you, keeping you in my prayers. Make sure you come on up with the grind too. Anyway, I'm getting a lot of questions from everyone about the VST plugins. Hey James or hey Rosell, what are you using, man? How you get your vocals to sound that way? So this one right here gonna be on the VST plugins and the vocals that I'm using, uh, and the plugins that I'm using on those vocals. Okay, I will do another one for the music, but there's so many things you can do with the music, man. It's it's quite wide, but I'll show you what I do with the music also. Okay, so first of all, I have a template that I have made. Okay. And uh, I'm going to help you all create a template real quick. Uh, this Cubase 5 or the Window 4, if you have that, go ahead and open it up. Let's get it pushing. So create a new project. Pick an empty rack. Uh, I already have a folder. Have You know, make you a folder or whatever. Bring it up. Boom. You have a blank one. And what you want to do is go ahead and add your audio tracks and all that. Just get all your audio tracks how you want it. Go ahead and get your buses going, your group tracks everything go ahead and name everything okay and once you are done you go into this next phase okay I'm gonna close this out I'm gonna bring up my template that I already have made okay so let me go new project that's the template I want to use boom open that up boom okay, okay. So, so once you're done, done yours should, should look something, something like this, this okay, okay. Uh, right, right now you can see we peeking, peeking right here because I'm actually, actually sitting on that channel Okay, and I want to turn that off because it may be messing up with the vocals right now. So, anyway, you have your group channel set and everything is ready to go. You have stuff named, you have your channels named and all that, okay? So, what, what I do is this right here. Go to my mixing board on the front end. Right here is the input channel that I'm actually on, okay? Now, it's not actually working because... I'm bypassing it on the mixing board, okay? But what we have going is that this is the SSL 4000 channel strip. I use the setting that they have lead box. And then you also make your changes. Right now, I have the EQ bypass because I have the Eureka. If you do not have a preamp, no big deal. Use the EQ right here, man. Use these right here. They're wonderful. They're very aggressive. And take your time with them. Turn a knob. Don't be scared to turn a knob. Turn that joker. You know what I'm saying? Boom. That's how easy it is. Bam. Just turn the knob. See what it does. If it's not a sound that you like, turn it again. Keep on turning it until you get what you want, okay? And and it's up to your taste, all right? Uh, you can use what they have. I think it's a little rich in the middle uh, for the lead box. So what I would do is turn down the gain on the middle of it just a little bit, probably between three and six decimals, and then just leave everything else the same. You should be good right there. I also changed the noise gate. Also, this helps down on the breaths that the person take. How long I can get the breaths quiet, that's fine. So I don't have to go in and actually make changes to the breaths myself or, you know, run a different noise gate on top of it, okay? So those are little settings you might want to take a look into also. So after that on the front, I also have a de -esser. This also cuts down on work I have to do down the road. So certain words like anything that starts with the letter S, you know, or the letter T, Tom, two, some, something like that. As you can see, the needle would move and it would quiet the high pitch of that, of that word, okay? So, and remember, we're on the front end. So whatever you have running on the front end, it will affect the audio and you cannot take it away because we're actually on the input. But... Once you have the settings that you have, don't worry about it. These are good settings, and you can just go from there, okay? So the the uh, de-esser that I'm using is from the Bluetooth Nomad Factory. Uh, Nomad makes some wonderful plugins. Do not sleep on these guys. This is my secret weapon, so I don't have to go buy uh, Avalon or Joe Meek or Universal Audio, you know, um, Focusrite. I don't have to spend twenty five hundred dollars on it. I got it right here in the software, baby. But these are real machines in real life, okay? So that's on my front end. So down here on my group, on my vocals, I run the SS um, Studio Channel SC two two six. This is like my best friend. This is almost in every song 
that I use. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I believe it is in every song. It's very, I mean, very rarely that I do not use this, okay? Uh, I use this one all the time, okay? This is uh, a, a preamp that does it all pretty much. If I want to add warmth, I want the tube sound, there it is right there, boom. Uh, I use the uh, the vocal setup for the male, if I have a male, like they also have one for female, as you can see it changes it for the female. Uh, for my preset, it comes up on male automatically. And turn these knobs, get it the way you want. Um, I, I have a setting, since I don't turn the knob, I don't know what the settings are, but uh, I have a setting for my mic and everything that I'm running that I don't have to come in here and fool around unless it's a high-pitched male voice. Then I give him some, a little warmth, and then I change the roll off. I might just, just let it be infinity right there. But a lot of times, I, I will be between 80 and 60. I don't need a lot of deep, deep bass tones on the mic. You know, somewhere up in 80 and 60 is all you need to be at, okay? And then, that's, that's all I have on my preamp setup as far as the template. Uh, if you want to add some reverb, you can. You can get you a reverb. Bluetooth got a nice reverb right there that you can use. Um, so I only do those on the fly. I don't have it auto automatically set up. It's just depending on the song because I may or may not need it, okay? And then my stuff will come out of this channel. It'll come out of vocals, even my hooks. My hooks got that same EQ I already set, as you can see. I will have some reverb on the hook sometimes. It just depends, again, on the song. And everything will come out of vocals and hook and come to this main mix. This is where my music will actually meet the vocals right here in, on this channel. My music, if I have reasons going along with it with the drums, my music coming from the Phantom, they all would meet up here. Now, if my Phantom had something else going on, sometimes my Phantom sit on audio one and two, but right now it's just not set. But uh, it would go through its own little small EQ channel if I don't have an EQ going on the board itself, okay? So, and that's another way how I get the bit music sound as far as the music. But they will all meet here. And inside of here is empty. Sometimes I would run the multiband compressor right here. Boom. I would run a multiband compressor right here. This is the one that comes with Cubase. It's also inside of the window. You, you all need to check it out. It's good on vocals, too. On my vocals, mine would look something kind of like this would be down to here. I know that. And then I would quiet some of this top end, okay? This may move to about right there. And I know this right here would come, come down to probably about somewhere in there. But my settings would be somewhere in that for the multiband compressor. And then I use it so much, I, I pretty much know where I want to put the knobs and everything at by heart because I use it so much. So I get my vocals right, but I always remember your vocals need to sit in the middle, not on the ends. Your music need to sit on the ends as far as the bass and the high pitches, you know, your high hats and stuff. But your vocals need to be in the middle, something like this, an oval shape, and then your music need to be like a smiley face, okay? So kind of keep that in mind, okay? And uh, that'll help your music go so much better, okay? It'll make things easier for you. And then once you have everything set the way that you want it, you have all your plugins going, and everything then you want to come over here and hit save as boom as a template you name it and and it's there so every time you so you can close this and every time you want to create a new project you can go to your template it should show right here if it didn't show right here you didn't do something right but right here that's the setup I have that's Rick aka Tars uh, this was what we was using when we was running on Cubase, now uh, I, I build, build in Cubase. Cubase. I set everything up in Cubase, Cubase as far as the music, the building in there, and then, then I bust it out and dump it and run, run everything in the window and have everything running at 192. So, so you have any more questions, questions about different plugins, plugins or, you know, you know, I have a lot of plugins, plugins that I use. Uh, uh, as you can see, you know, I have the Nomads plugin. I also have the Mastering Suite. I have Flux. I have, I have Sonox, I have the URS, Salona Kiss, uh, PSP. I love the little PSP stuff, man. Don't sleep on, sleep on those. Uh, I also have Waves. I have all their plugins. So if you all have any questions, let me know. Hit me back whenever you all need, you know, any questions answered. Jamesbrosell at gmail.com. Peace. See y'all later.